Hello and welcome to the Belkas the Haunted Giant Dragon podcast. I'm your host, HC, and with me is... Wolf. And you have no idea how many technical difficulties it took us to in order to start this episode. Uh, <laughs> it was a journey, but apparently I have a theory that the remarks might be to us for making this episode, and they don't want us making this episode because today we are talking about if we could reboot Haunted and Dragon, how would we do it? Anyway. Wolf, what do you think about this topic? I thought a lot about it. Ooh. And it's interesting. <laughs> how about, oh, if you've oh. thought a lot about it, how about you start first? Okay. But and then I'll so, tell you how wrong you are. Yeah. What else is new? <laughs> You're wrong, I'm wrong. It depends on the person, I guess. It's all subjective, as I usually say. No, I'm always right. That's just <laughs> fact. <laughs> Debatable, debatable. <laughs> you told me that doing this through Discord might help us. Apparently, it broke me up even more. So, no, you were not right. What talking about? <clears throat> what what's going on behind the scenes stay be, stays behind the scenes. And anyway, on with the show. So, the first order of business is: Would we? If we were to reboot Hunter to Turn Dragon, we are now a part of DreamWorks Animation, okay? Apparently, we are both animators. We got in, we got to the directing chair, we are producer chair. Imagine that. We are sitting and having coffee with, with Jeffrey Katzenberg. We are Dear there. Gods. <laughs> and now we are, say, we are about to reboot this franchise, so... Would you make it a movie franchise, a TV franchise, or a multimedia franchise, which is what it is now, pretty much? Mm-hmm. Personally, I'll I'll try and stick with a movie franchise only because usually when I bring up How to Turn Dragon to other people, most people know it as a movie and just a movie. When I tell them there's a show, people are like there's a show, really. <laughs> I've had similar responses here and there. Yeah, so um, I'll try and stick with movies if I were to handle this. Because, again, most people know this as a movie, and all of a sudden you're announcing a show. Like, you know, even when they announced the show itself, people, and I'm noticing this a lot now with the Tangled show and the Big Hero 6 show, where people are like, why make a TV show when you can make a C- another movie? And so I think if you are, you are rebooting something that's more more known as a film, might as well keep it as a film. And I I the reason I'm not making this a multimedia franchise and saying maybe it could spin off into a show because then it will draw even more comparison, comparisons to the original mm-hmm. to what we have now. And you know if you are rebooting something, you might. There has to be something that reminds me, reminds you of the original, obviously. But it also kind of needs to stand on its own. And if we try and give this a TV show and graphic novels and everything that this specific franchise had, then you're kind of getting lost because you're mm-hmm. always going to be compared to the thing that came before you. So just I say just movies. What about you? Uh yeah, I think I would stick to movies as well. Like, doing a TV franchise would be hard. I, it would be harder because, at least for what I would do, it would be a little bit harder because you'd have to come up with a lot more and do and add a lot more, I think. So I would stick with just movies as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> developing a series is a lot more hard. It's a lot harder mm-hmm. than, than developing a movie because you know with a tv show you need to think about it, the world and and you can't you need to do this with a movie as well but not to the same extent because you're there for an hour and a half or two hours and then it's done with a tv show you need to take into account a lot of things and also though there was another thing i talked about uh, about it with someone uh, 
the interesting that you notice that there are a lot of uh, shows based on movies, but lately there are there aren't a lot of movies based on shows. You know what I mean? Well, I mean it's it's harder to do one. It's harder to take one from the other, right? Like it's hard to make a show based on a movie, and it's hard to make a movie based on a show. There's a lot that needs to change, even between those two things. Yeah, but I mean. How many, in the last five years, how many movies based on shows have been released in theaters? I'm not counting direct-to-DVD or TV. Uh, like, with, the exception, with the exception of the My Little Pony one, which came out this year, which I saw advertisements for, I don't really remember something. I don't keep up enough to know, so I can't say. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so we both stick to movies and TV franchise. We it's a lot more woke, I guess, and multimedia. It's too much. It's too similar to what it is now. So no. Anyway, next question. I you you'll probably have something to say about this one. Uh, would you make it more loyal to the books or the franchise, the movie <laughs> franchise, or would you put your own spin on it? Personally, I would like I, having something that's more loyal to the books would be interesting. I think, and it would be. Oh, I, do what? I knew you would say that. That's all. I think it'd be more interesting, absolutely. But I don't think that's what I would do. I think I would try and go something completely different personally mm -hmm. okay so let me ask you this how much different is completely different how much would you change i would say all the old characters is you know do something completely different like don't use anything from the original movies completely yeah, but then cast, I can't... all of that yeah you know i when i tell you when i thought about this option i did have the thought that how much would you how much would it change to the point? Would you change it to the point that it's how to turn dragon in name only? Oh, because it, you need to keep in mind that even if it's a reboot, people would still come in if they have memories of the old franchise that we have now. I, just a note to the listeners when I say old franchise, I mean the franchise that we have now that we all know and love. Uh, but I said like this because if we are talking about rebooting it, it will be, you know what I mean. So, okay. well, because, wait, so, wait. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just to repeat the question. Uh, so, how much could you change knowing that people would would probably criticize you on the most hmm. if you change the fact that uh, Hiccup's eyes are different? Yeah. Again, like I said, I still don't think I would use the original cast. I think I would go with something a little bit different. Oh. Mm -hmm. And that different would be, I think I would say, set it. I would personally want to focus more on the dragons and what would be interesting there and give more of a focus to them potentially and would look at maybe setting things before Hiccup's time. Mm -hmm. Okay. But okay, so let me let me ask you this then: what makes uh, what makes this idea of yours a reboot and not another part of this bigger franchise? Yeah. <laughs> asking the harder asking, questions. Yeah, I'm asking the tough questions. Mm. I think it would be a reboot because I think. Overall, like right, a reboot should keep the sim should try to stay similar to the ideals that the first movie that the original movie set right. Mm -hmm. You know those same ideals that the first movie brings across should stay very much the same in my opinion as far as a reboot goes. So if I was going to reboot it and change up the entire cast of characters and do it from a different perspective, maybe then. I would try and keep... I think it would be wise to try and keep the ideals the same. Then again, maybe my idea is terrible and I should just not even bother with rebooting it and should just kind of continue on with the How to Train Your Dragon name, but this is an entirely different thing. 
just based within that universe, if you will. Okay. So, in terms of me, let me think. <clears throat> okay, let me think. Let's see. In terms of me, I would probably do try and have some elements of the books in there, but at the same time, let's say, put in my own spin on it. At the end of the day, rebooting this entire thing would kind of put your own spin into on it. So. That's one. I I won't make it too different, but like keep the basic the basic idea the same because again, people would if this was if this was to be rebooted, people would come back go into this with some sort of expect expectations of what to see. They want to see hiccups. They want to see toothless. You know the you know the deal. So probably try and find. I, I would probably try and try and find the best way to blend the books and the movies like you know the take elements from this take elements from that because mm -hmm. i'll probably i'll probably make toothless in, to in terms of appearance like the more like the first one more like more identical to the to the movies but in terms of personality maybe i'll go with his personality from the books will the dragon stuck i don't know it seems a bit unnecessary i think you know, I haven't thought about it. <laughs> um, you know, uh, but I'll maybe try and do do. I'll I'll try and get more elements from the books in there if I were to reboot it. Because at the end of the day, I know there are these people who read the books before watching the movies, and they don't like the movies because of how far they stray away from the source material. I know it. I get it. So if I'll do it more, loyal, if it will be more loyal to the books, there I know there, that there is an audience for this. But the question is, how much would it be loyal to the books? Because let's be honest, there is no way you, no matter how good it is, you can make this a twelve a twelve film franchise unless you're going the land before time route, which is debatable about how good it is or not mm -hmm. no uh, because you know and especially if you're making making them all you know what is that <clears throat> okay um, I what i want to say is that yeah, with the land before time you know it's kind of it's kind of the thing that they were all you so is that all you know, uh, direct to DVD? Yeah, no, well, but except for the original. Except for the first one, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the original was theatrical and was theatrically released, and mm -hmm. then all all of the other ones are direct to DVD. Yeah. So in case of Auto Turn Dragon, do you see like people going into the theater to see twelve movies of the same thing? No, <laughs> probably not. In, yeah, unless you make them the perfect, the perfect movies, you know, mm -hmm. if each film is like a ten out of ten. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, I'm more, I'm just trying to keep the script uh, the script in here because it it keeps closing. So if I mumble or something, that's the reason. But uh, yeah, I'll try and keep uh, a few elements from the books, though. But uh, obviously, not all movies. There's there's a there's a reason uh, there's a reason so, uh, the land before time went direct to video eventually, even though you know. <laughs> but um, what I will say. What I will say is that I'll probably I'll also make it try and make it look a lot like the movies because again I need to bring in that audience which kind of with the movies in the first place so you know try I guess the best way to to answer this question is try and make it similar but not too much because it still it still need to stand on its own like i won't ever do it like a shot by shot remake like disney's doing right now with mm -hmm. you did the best 
I mean, that, that brings up a point, though. Like, we should talk about this. The easiest kind of remake to do, the easiest kind of reboot to do, is take animation and go live action. You know, would live action be a thing we should consider? That's a question that's coming up. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I see that now. <laughs> You're saying that only now I taught you better, Wolf. I taught you to rehearse the scripts. No, never. I didn't have it up until just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so where was I with this? But yeah, mm, um, yeah, that's pretty much my answer on it. And uh, all the so the one last thing to close this shot by shot remake, not a chance. If you are rebooting something or remaking something, make it your own. Make it make it your own and because then nobody wins nobody wins if you have a better if you have a version of the same movie you can watch at home we because because yeah yeah you know what i mean i don't need to explain myself with, with that saying like why should i watch emma watson not not singing all that good and all these subplots when i can just put in my blue put in my blu-ray the original weather film oh dear Oh yeah, I didn't like the Beauty and the Beast remake if it wasn't obvious. Oh god, it was boring. Um, moving on. Anyway, moving on. So I'll let you <laughs> leave this one. Oh dear. Uh, how would you handle several characters? You know, Hiccup, Toothless, Astrid, whoever you want. Uh, would you keep them the same? Uh, change them completely? What would you do with these characters? You know. Before we get to this question, I would like to th I would like to talk about a thing. It's easy to get into the idea of like what would you change or what would you add, but if you had the ability to reboot it and make it mostly similar, what would we take away from the original to make it different? Mm -hmm. And that's the question. One of the things that I think I would take away first and foremost is the relationship between Astrid and Hiccup. I think, the, again, like there's nothing wrong with it. Before anyone gets mad at me about hating Hickstrid, I don't hate Hickstrid. If Rush was here, I would already have, I would have already been getting yelled at. But like, yeah. I think it's, again, I've said it before in the past, I don't think it's handled as well. So I would say take that out and instead make Astrid that straight conduit for the village that she started off as and keep her that way. And that way, when you, you know, and don't call the romantic flight scene the romantic flight scene, but still have those mind changing moments there for her where Hiccup's able to change her mind. So I think mm -hmm. I would definitely change up Astrid's character a lot. Um, the rest of the characters, I really don't think there's a lot to change there that would be meaningful. Because I think mm -hmm. the first movie, at the very least, if that's the one, if we're not talking about rebooting the second, we're just talking about rebooting the first. I think most of the characters there are handled in such a way that it makes a lot of sense, and that nothing feels completely off about them that, you know, shouldn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think if you're gonna make changes, make changes to. It's alright. Hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the only one you would say you change. Yeah, I think Astrid. I would definitely change Astrid to some degree. Be less of you know, and especially near the end, right? Like have less of that romantic, those insinuated romantic feelings there. Like less of that. Don't insinuate that at all. Keep it more of a of what it's of what the intent is supposed to be, which is a meeting of minds and changing of ideals. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me ask you this. Would you change up to the point that you'll just be kamikaze? No. Because they're two different characters. And I don't think Astrid's character, as it stands, looking at her from the first movie, fits at all with who that who with who Kamikaze is. Like, I no, think... I don't. 
I don't mean that. Uh, I don't mean that uh, you'll just uh, make us read the act like kamikaze. I'm saying that would you just change the character overall? No. Again, like I don't like. I think if you're going to like kamikaze as a character, I think she should be like again, right? Like it's a bleh. It is a reboot, so people are going to come in expecting certain things. They're going to come in expecting certain characters. Maybe you'll add a character, maybe you'll take away a character, but they're going to expect some similarities. And if they see Astrid, and if they see Astrid, then they're going to expect Astrid to be Astrid. And if they see Kamikaze, then they'll expect, oh, this is a new character. If you've read the books, then you would expect Kamikaze. And I don't think taking Astrid away and putting Kamikaze in is beneficial or does anything that would make sense in my mind like say you kept all the cast the same but you took away Astrid and then just put Kamikaze in her place it just in my opinion doesn't work for what the first movie is trying to do and unless you're trying to be more similar to the books in which case your entire story and plot and everything like that would be very vastly different from what the first movie is and uh, not necessarily you could still combine the two it would be different enough that I think substituting one for the other wouldn't make as much sense. Okay, gotcha. Um, and might feel off to the audience overall. Okay. Um, so in my in my side of things, I I would probably keep make fish legs more like his book counterpart than his um, DreamWorks counterpart. Because, to be honest, I'm thinking about it more, I like the more s- cynical fish legs. Like he, and, and when you make him like this, he's a good counterpart to Hiccup. <clears throat> if, That's a good change, if actually. We, if we keep Hiccup like uh, the movies, that is. And to be honest, I don't really see a reason to change Hiccup all that much. Uh, th- mm-hmm. This is one I thought about the most, like... How would I change Hiccup? How would I reboot Hiccup? But the more I'm thinking about it, like, why should we really change Hiccup? Is, and to be honest, that's probably the, re- the one reason why I don't think this franchise needs to be rebooted at all in the future, because Hiccup is a great character, character as he is, and any change you make to him will probably take, a, take away from it. <laughs> Hiccup as a buff young man. Well, obviously not like that. But... <laughs> Hiccup is buff. He's no longer you're scrawny. Not, That's not, the change. No, no, you know what? You know what? I have the perfect. Solution. The exact same yeah. voice. The exact same voice from Hiccup. He's just really. Yeah, that, that's, not, that's another thing, really. Who would you cast as different to, as different actors for these characters? Because uh. you know. Uh, um, people have said, I'm not sure if I said it on mic or off mic, but people have always said that if Hot and Dragon would ever be in live action, Andrew Garfield would play Hiccup, and you know what, I I can see it, but in terms of voice, sure. Like, I could, I could see a, a him as that character in live action. Uh-huh. Um, hmm. In terms of voice, I mean, it, it's... kind of hard to see any other voice in that role other than Jay. He just kind of owns it. And that happens yeah. for a lot of the characters. I have a perfect oh, uh, dear. Eureka. Are you ready? Probably not. I'm sure you'll all agree with me once I'll say his name. His name is Rush2112. <laughs> Didn't see, didn't see that one coming, did you? Did you? No comment. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll probably make fish legs like the books. Um, in terms of voice, who would I get? Who would I get to voice uh, like a snarky fish legs? Mm. Um. You know, the first, uh, first person that comes to my mind is the person who voiced, like, the... What's his name? Uh, Terry McGuinness, the Batman Beyond Batman, if you know what I'm talking about. Hmm. Yeah. 
That would, yeah, that would fit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's that. Um, now, Astrid is another character I thought a lot about how could I like reinterpret her and mm. okay you know here's a question would you see something that uh, that has uh, like not uh, not either Astrid or Kamikaze but both of them would I see something that had both characters in it yeah yeah sure I would be interested in that I think it would be because Astrid and Kamikaze are two characters that are definitely very different from one another like they're very starkly different and I think it'd be interesting seeing those two characters side by side and playing off of one another because Kamikaze is very much kind of carefree Astrid is not that she's very strict she's very rules driven Kamikaze isn't and so I think you'd see a lot of good playing off of one another in terms of attitude and personalities there. So yeah, I would be interested. Like, okay. I think that's the only way... That's cool. Like, I think that's... Yeah, like, other than having them both be separated and not having them both and, and doing one or the other, I think the only way you could have them... Like, the only way you would see... It'd either be one or the other or both of them in the same movie is what I'm saying, yeah. So, yeah, like, I'd be interested in either way, but I think... Yeah. It would be interesting. I would be interested in seeing it. Okay. Especially if you're keeping both characters relatively the same to who they are as we know them right now. Okay. Uh, either way, let me think. Let me think. What would I do with Astrid? Um... You know, having both Astrid and Kamikaze in the same product is probably not a bad idea. It will, it could probably work, depending on what you'll do with them. So, uh, you know what? I'll say I'll put both of them in. What I'll do with both of them in is not clear. I don't have that idea sorted out, but hey, it's something. <laughs> I'll probably keep uh, Snotloud related to Hiccup. It could it could be argued that he's still related to him in the DreamWorks franchise, but they don't really play off of that. It's never been mentioned once, so we have no clue. Uh, it, was, it was hinted. Never explicitly, though, so we still can't say for certain. Mm -hmm. um, the twins... Yeah, sure, put them in, why not? <laughs> um, you know, here's a, here's a character. What do you do with Valka? Would she be king, kidnapped again, or would she actually be there throughout Hiccup's life? Uh, Hiccup's life, yeah. Hmm. See, that's an interesting one, right? Like, you could do the obvious idea of having Sto Stoic be gone and Valka be there instead, and, you know, how would that change things, right? And, like, looking at Valka's character as we know of her right now, like, how would that change things? Like, that could be an interesting change that would change the dynamic somewhat, maybe. You could also stick with the same, have Valka be gone, Stoic be there. You know, you know, you could imagine the plot of the first one if Valka was there. Like, the Valka we know that doesn't like to kill dragons and, and like, tries to stop the village and... Imagine, like, the sort of conflict that, on the one hand, Hiccup is like his mother, but he's trying to be like the father, and then when Toothless shows up, he starts to find out that his mother is not crazy, and mm -hmm. trying to build that connection. That could actually be pretty interesting. Yeah, absolutely, I would agree. Like, having both parents be there, and then being torn between wanting to be like looking up to your father who's the chief who you really idolize and look up to and want to be more like but fail at doing but fail at doing so miserably and then seeing your mother be so staunchly different i think like, that alone i think would be change enough that it would give you a much different movie but still stick to the ideals that the first one sets up about change and how change isn't necessarily a bad thing right 
I think that's that alone is a good enough change already for a reboot. Yeah. So I think we came up with that's how they reboot How to Train Your Dragon One. Have Valka be alive in there. That might be interesting enough to hold its own movie. <laughs> Burkest done. Hmm. Yep, that's that's our How to Train Your Dragon reboot. Great. Thank you, thank you for listening, everybody. Okay, but one last thing. Um, the interesting question I thought we could discuss. It, live action or animated? How would you do it? Uh, before we move on, Stoic, you know, we didn't really say, would you keep Stoic the same? I think I would mostly stick with Stoic being the same. Um, yeah, I'll keep him the same. No, I'll, keep him the, I'll keep him the same, but at the same time, I'm not sure if exactly the same. Mm. Like, how would, I, how would I explain this? Like, overall character, yeah, sure, okay. It could be, like, you know, the big father or and the, the intermediate father that the boy wants to be like and you know obviously keep him the chief because it gives hiccup something to look up to and knowing that he has this responsibility in the future yada 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 and we can't forget poor gobber yeah and you know how would i do gobber that's a that's a question hmm how would i do gobber <laughs> i mean Personally, I think he you should definitely what? stay. You know what? Let's, Craig Ferguson. Let's go completely. Let's go completely dark on this, okay? Oh dear. Are you with me? Let's I'm listening. go completely. Let's go completely dark with this. Go, like maybe at one point, like uh, about the entire. If we keep the idea that Valka has been kidnapped and not around for all this time. Gabber was in on it in order to be with Stoic. Mm. Unexpected. I thought you were just going to say Gabber was the one who was gone or dead or what have you. But okay. Mm. Interesting. Not yeah. sure if it works, <laughs> but interesting. <laughs> Well, interesting is a positive world sometimes. Interesting doesn't always mean good. It means interesting. <laughs> like those two things aren't synonymous with one another. Oh, well. Um, anyway, let me think about... Uh, uh, you know, which one of the villains would you keep? Like, what would, <clears throat> what would you do with Drago? Well, looking at oh, if we're looking at just the first movie, I think... I wouldn't have a villain in particular in the first movie. Mm -hmm. And I don't think okay, I would so... add one in either, because I think if you add in a villain at that point, it takes away somewhat from what the first movie is trying to do. And if you're trying to stick to that similar set of ideals that it put forth, then I think adding a villain would take too much away from that. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I I would agree. I would agree. Um, yeah. So uh, so are we going back to the final question? Absolutely. Yeah, we can move uh, on. Just couldn't forget good old Gabba. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'll keep Gabba. I'm just not sure what I'll do with him. <laughs> Poor like, you know what? Maybe I'll make him more or more of uh, maybe I will also try and. In and include some elements from the book that he's more of an asshole. A caring asshole, but sure. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, a next uh, next up, I guess. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts? Action or animated? How would you do it? <sighs> I mean, right. Like if you're doing this, if you're doing a similar, if you're rebooting it in animation. The animation, I think, would definitely, in my mind, if I'm just going back in to see the movie rebooted and it's using similar animation, I think I would be a little disappointed. So it would have to be something that's drastically different in order to really get me interested in going to see it again, because otherwise I would rather just watch the first movie again. So 
live action would definitely get me interested. Whether it's good or not isn't really my point. I would be interested in seeing and seeing How to Train Your Dragon in live action just because it would be vastly different from what I saw originally. Whether or not it would be good is a different story, but I would definitely be interested. <laughs> okay. So you said live action. Go on. I could go I could go either way. I think mm -hmm. I would I think I would stick with animation personally, but I would definitely yeah, try I... and do something different, but I could I could be interested in either or. I could go either way. Mm -hmm. Um here's what I say. On the one hand, I I under, I agree that if you're making it animated, what's the, there's this kind of what's the point? Because the original was animated, so how much different can you be? But at the same time, I'm thinking, well, if you make it in live action, it could potentially be cooler. I get. It could potentially be cooler, but at the same time, most of it, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to, an to animate a lot of it anyway. It's post. going to be a lot of CGI, yeah, absolutely. You're going to, uh, you're going to reanimate a lot of it, a lot of it will be green screened, and even the things that you can have the actual actors there, it will still, you know, it will still be, you will need to animate it a lot. So yeah. it kind of boils down to what, what, what's the point here? What, uh, why, why, why go to the role, to all the troubles of making it live and you can just animate it all from the start? Well, you could do, you know, you could go if I'm not mistaken, the Mad Max road and do a lot more practical effects with it instead. Yeah, like Jurassic Park, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uses a lot of animatronics for its stuff instead of CGI. CGI is there, but there's still also a lot of animatronics as well. So you could do a whole lot of animatronic stuff and using practical effects, and that would definitely be interesting. I think that would make it a bit more worth it. Like, I think if you did live action, I think relying on CGI at that point, I agree. Why bother? If you're relying on solely CGI, I think if you're going to do live action, I would stick with a lot of practical effects. Personally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of my reason why I don't really think live action is the way to go. Absolutely. Because... But at the same time, you know what? Let's let's say we are doing this animated because hell, yeah. it is an animated franchise. Sure. So, it, w how would you distinguish it from the original? Like, what what artistic choice do you think should be taken if um, if you know if it were if it were to be rebooted and animated and stuff? I mean. We've seen it in 3D animation. It might be interesting to go back to 2D animation. Mm -hmm. 2D animation, interesting. You could go back uh, to uh, that. Uh, yeah, we could, but then again, I hate to be that guy. I like I like 2D animation and, every, and everything, but also let's keep in mind for uh, let's keep in mind for for a, for a split second that. We are talking. We are talking about. Um, <clears throat> we are talking about a day and age where, sadly, two D animations doesn't really make money if it's not based on something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Like, it's hard to say. Like, how would you change it up animation wise? Like, you know. Where would the tech for three D anim? Like, I would. I would have to ask. Like, if I'm just. Hmm. I guess, do you need to change up the animation style at all? Like, is changing up the animation style just something you're doing for it to be different? Or, and if so, is that really necessary? Some changes just to be different aren't necessarily good changes, right? So, I mean, you could always change up the characters or the story a little bit. Like, again, just adding in Valka at the beginning of her, you know, and have Valka be there. As we know her right now from the second movie, have that Valka be there 
for the first movie and not be gone or missing already changes up enough that even if you did it in the same animation style, it would still be worth seeing just because of how different it would change up how the characters interact and the story that's happening. Mm -hmm. So I guess yeah. you know, the question, you know, again, so like simply put, the question you have to ask is changing up the animation, are you doing it just to be different or are you doing it for any you know substantial reason? Like live action, practical effects makes a lot of sense because that's live action at that point, right? Like it's vastly different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say 2D animation uh, just because it would be different, but again, that's me just being different for the sake of being different. So I think probably it, sticking it, with... It, uh, Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm trying to think like... Uh... Um, okay, let me ask you this. Would you say that How to Turn Dragon, in terms of its visual style, it resembles like all like some of the later the newer Disney movies, like uh, any every anything post Tangled, Tangled, which is like it's CG but it has that two D feel to it. Um, hmm. I, I would say it to some degree. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I've said. I don't know if I've said it on here, but I've said in the past that I think How to Train Your Dragon started that trend a little bit to a, you know, to a degree. I think everything that's come since has been based off of the first How to Train Your Dragon movie to a degree in terms of some of its style in some, in, from some movies where Disney's concerned. Right? So I think there are some similarities. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would say there's definitely because, some similarities. you know, if you could like make the style <clears throat> kind of like a, a cell shaded look, if in, in like uh, all those games that um, have obviously have three D graf graphics, but they look hand drawn. Mm -hmm. Like if you would make it like that, I, I, that, that would be actually a pretty good, a pretty cool stylistic choice for mm -hmm. it. I think. Yeah, I can like, agree. Uh, a more hand-drawn uh, effect, but still through yeah, the animated. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe, in re, like, uh, make the colors brighter and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my uh, that's my idea for it. But but yeah, do you have anything else to say before we close? Or what other ideas do you have to in order to? Re reboot Out of Turn Dragon. Hmm. Well, obviously it's set in space. In space, interesting. Obviously, there's, you know, this magical force that people can use that they don't quite understand. Mm hmm. Interesting, interesting, <laughs> very interesting. I, I mean, uh, I, you get what I'm I, referencing, I you, right? I think you have, I think you have something there. <laughs> I know, right? Like it's it. No one's done something like this before, and I think it would be very popular. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. Let's do this. How to turn dragon in space? Especially yeah. if the dragons can talk, and also use this magical force. Okay, now you lost me. <laughs> now you lost me. Well, see, I guess in this version, that the dragons aren't the dragons I, aren't from Earth; they're I aliens. Think say, oh, 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 I think I think you are missing the point, and <laughs> uh, the point is what you're trying to say is it's a trap. No, not at all. Not even remotely so. <laughs> so we'll just uh, uh, where the hell are we going with this <laughs> I don't know we should end but, uh, I, but you know I just uh, I I honestly think that uh, we pretty we pretty much we're pretty much done with this like we 
like we said what we what we had to say we said how we will reboot hot time dragon if we have ever get the option we will never get the option but hey we can dream and yeah we got it Woohoo. Mm -hmm. so anything you want to say in the future dreamworks call us we have ideas for you yeah call, call us we'll, it will be amazing and so if we don't have anything to say uh, anything uh, anything to say so that's been all for this episode of the Bellcast. we hope you enjoyed tell us how you will reboot how to turn a dragon if you ever got the chance and just to clarify rebooting it doesn't mean all the spin-off ideas or sequel ideas or prequel ideas we will do another episode about that mm -hmm. at some future so tell us how you would reboot how to turn a dragon and uh, if there are any technical difficult uh, technical problems with this episode you can't hear or something we're sorry we had a few problems here behind the scenes we hope you we could get this fixed by next episode so yes. until that time until that time uh, next time i was hc and i've been wolf and we will talk to you all next time take care bye bye